Go. Welcome, guys, to the back. <laughs> That was awful. Uh, guys, welcome back to Off The Script Podcast. <laughs> Today we have on uh, Matt Tofton, um, fresh off of his uh, win. He won the overall at the PCA the- UK Open. There that show, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're, we're having him on. So yeah, thank you for coming on, Matt. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so how, how was that whole experience for you? Because obviously... You you didn't just win a class, you won the overall, and then you also had your partner in crime, Mrs. Tofton, go in and also win an overall. That's pretty yeah, crazy, she, isn't it? She was the day before, um, and the first timers, um, and it's horrible watching. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's so much worse watching someone mm. than, than competing. Um, yeah. Yeah, to be fair, it was pretty lucky that it was socially distanced because I, I think if anyone was sat next to her, I'd have just been all, all over the place in bits. Uh, <laughs> it took me twenty minutes to sort of calm myself down and yeah, uh, collect my thoughts and not burst into tears. <laughs> I think but, I don't um, think anyone would have blamed you if you did, though. To be fair, because that's huge. Like, oh like, yeah, it was, it was a really good achievement, and then. Uh, so yeah, she put the pressure on me. Yeah, that's to, it. To follow up the next day. And that's it. You, that's exactly what you did. You went out there, did what you needed to do and, and took it home with you. So, uh, I had to. Yeah. Well, a, uh, <laughs> It'd be fuming. I would, I would have you'd have been, been, been the had. failure of the couple, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <For now. laughs> yeah, that's cool. So... um do you want to what what do you want to run us through Jermaine. first? Yeah, let's let's let's, uh, let's get some pictures up. Uh, screen share. We've just come off of the back of a yeah. um, a little show review, so let's pull it up. Oh, but yeah. Um, so you went in there, walked away with the overall as a as a show. A lot of people, because obviously people who listen to the show know who you are and whatnot. But yeah. uh, if they haven't listened to the first episode we did with you, where we got into your journey so far and whatnot, we highly recommend people do that. Because yeah. since then, Matt's really been on more as a co-host, really, than as a guest. Um, yeah. So it's always fun having having you on, Matt. And but today is more looking at like what you did approaching the show. We've had a lot of questions about you know what you and Sass did with food from the off season into the show um supplementation if you want to get into any of the peds you know there's been a lot of just a lot of queries and things like that because of the drastic improvement you know mm-hmm. in your physiques from from last year so yeah. obviously people want to know and you're happy to talk about it so let's get in with it so obviously right. you started working with sass in in the off season and we'll just oh, go yeah. from there really i actually started with SAS um, four, five weeks out from last year's British. Mm. Um, so we, right. we, we, I'd already, I'd just done the amateur Olympia in Vegas. So I'd already sort of prepped myself. So I was already pretty lean. Yeah. And then, um, obviously he then took me through PCA qualifier last year, which I won the overall lap. And then, through the British finals, which I came second at. Yeah. Um, and then um, we got um, off season underway straight after the British finals. Um, and I think we, we did uh, an eight week rebound. So we kept drugs in for eight weeks um, and really pushed the food up. Um, and then I went on to TRT dose for five months, and then obviously lockdown came about. Um, um, so can we take a picture? I'm trying to <laughs> scroll through my Instagram. There you go. Um, oh. Yeah, so then obviously lockdown came about, and there was no no planned shows or anything. Yeah. Um, 
so I'd sort of given up yeah. before I was competing this year. Um, so I just I just chilled out a little bit. Um, like training wise, I just started training three times a week when the gym is shut, just to tick over. Yeah. Um, and then I think it would have been I think the last week in April, first week in May that I just thought I was so bored that I just needed someone to focus on. So mm. we just started, we just started again and just thought there'll be, hopefully be a show at the end of the year. Uh, let's just get working towards some and, and see what comes up. Um, so we started again, put some food back in. I think I was two, 237. Um, when we started, and I was a soft, fat 237. <laughs> um, and then I was two, 218, 219, so we only really pulled 18 pounds off, but wow. it, was a, it was a massive change in terms of like the physique. Um, yeah, I remember we, we were talking about this when you last came on before the show and looking at the, the drastic change you made. Um, yeah. in that time and how it, you you almost grew into your physique like it was it well was... It, it, it's the first time that I've ever taken a, like a half a year off, off yeah. drugs yeah. Um, usually in the past I've been I've done what everybody does like yeah I'm going to cruise and that cruise is one too high for a start yeah and then after six weeks, you say to yourself, okay, that's enough cruising. Yeah. Let's wrap it back up again. Uh, and, wow. and, and you go again. And this is the first time I've taken, I'd, I'd, I'd done a proper TRT dose of like a hundred um, milligram of test every sort of seven to 10 days. Uh, okay. And I did that for five, nearly six months. Wow. And then, Was that, uh, sorry to interrupt, was that, a coaching choice or was that a you choice? No, we, we did the rebound and we and then we planned to pull it down. Okay. And then there was a point where we, we had planned to sort of push it back up again. Mm. Um, but then with the whole COVID thing, yeah, it just got prolonged. Um, mm. And to be honest, I, I felt really good. I actually gained more weight during the TRT phase yeah. than I did. I think I put, um, I put about 25, 30 pounds on. Like the Jeez. food, the food was through the roof. Mm. Like, I, I think I said the last time, like drugs never really affect my appetite. Yeah. But I really noticed a massive increase in appetite when I was just running the TRT. Yeah. Um, and the amount of food we were sort of running, like eating in January, February, um, was was ridiculous, especially on my high days. Um, but I was having, he was saying that I wasn't, my cheat meals weren't big enough. So I was having to eat like two pizzas and then like two lots of chips. Yeah. And, and I was just putting it away. And yeah, obviously, I mean, you've all seen the pictures. Like I got, yeah. I got fat and I got heavy, but a lot of muscle came with it. Yeah. Um, and then again, when we, I think that having all that time off, when we put gear back in um, at the start of May, yeah, my body just it's responded funny. like crazy. Uh, and I just kept, I, I didn't lose any weight for weeks. Yeah. And I mean, like, it got to the point even probably six or seven weeks out where we did a refeed. And I jumped back up to the 237 that I started on. Um, Drastically different look. But I, yeah, I just looked like a different person. Yeah. Uh, and then, like, eventually it came down. But if you didn't, if you'd see like the before and after picture from 237 to 219, you wouldn't think that was the, the oh, only difference. You, you've only lost 18 pounds. Like, it looks like I've lost like 40 pounds. Wow. Um, and I do put that down to probably because I tick them off. For a big chunk, which is again the the blueprint that we're going to follow this year. Yeah. So uh, so you're staying um, all the way through your off season now with a coach, continuing on from your last off season. 
where where do you see yourself going now? What's the plan? Yeah, me and Sass have already obviously set down. We've, we've planned the year. Mm. Um, the goal is PCA British Finals next year. Okay. And, um, a lot of people have messaged me and told me that I, I should go for IFBB Pro Card. Um, I've had a lot of nice compliments from judges and top people that say that I probably would have won a few weeks ago, but obviously it's, it's, it's a pointless um, yeah. comment because I wasn't there and you can never say that I would or, or how yeah. I would have looked that weekend. Um, but a lot of people have said that I should go for it, but until I tick off that bridge, yeah, um, I don't see the point in trying to move up to the next level until I've completed this one. Yeah, it's the same with me. I yeah. uh, like I I I after last year um, and not making it to my British finals as a junior, I do have that sort of vendetta now where I want that ticked off. Like it, yeah. I do have that in my and people said, "Oh, why don't you do this? Why do you do that?" I'm like, "No, I, I like I whatever happens afterwards, I'll worry about afterwards. I want to tick that off first. So yeah, I mean this this, this like is you- the year I've, I've done. I've had third place, second place, second place. Mm. I, I, I just won the first. I, I won. I always said to myself when I was 25, 26, that if I hadn't had a British title by by the round the age of thirty, that I'd stop. But obviously, I've been that close. Yeah, I've done top three at Nava Britons. I've had top three at the PCA British three times. Um, so I just I want to win it, and yeah. then. Um, we can, there'll probably be a lot of things going on around the British finals as well. I re- to be fair, I really wanted to have a bash at the FitX. Mm. Um, but the timings of the shows, if they have one closer to their British finals, like towards the end of the year, um, it may be a case of, of doing them. But at the same time, I don't know whether I want to be doing four or five shows on the space of a month. Yeah. Um, so, like I say, the, the the plan is British finals, win the British, um, win my class. If I can push for a PCA pro card of that British finals as well, that'd be icing on the cake yeah. like with, with an overall win. But the, the first goal is class win British finals. Okay. In regards to that, like everyone, because we've had it as well, haven't we, Jermaine? People saying, Christ, you should, Matt should do two bros and all this. Yeah. To me, like, you are you don't come across as the kind of person who wants to win the pro card, sit on his morals, wait a few years and then be competitive after a few years. You like, you, you want to earn your stripes. Do you know what I mean? Like, you want to be yeah, turning pro and, and ready to stand in a lineup and have the, the eyes go to you. That's what I mean. I mean, some when when there was one pro card available, mm. like when it was the old UK BFF or whatever yeah. the yeah. BBA was, generally the person that won the pro card was ready to step straight into the pro ranks. Yeah, uh, and I want to be competing. I want to be on stage. I don't want to have to either win a pro card and then have to take three years out of competing yeah to be possibly still not even competitive on a on a professional stage like what's the point in paying thousands of pounds for having to travel to either europe or america or somewhere to compete at a bottom tier show with bottom tier athletes and still not place right it ends up costing you a lot of money just to to go and lose yeah. um and an IFBB pro card would be great for business. Yeah, um, it would be, but that's so it's maybe something that obviously further down the line in, in the last year of competing that I might try and do. Yeah, but right now I'd, I'm really enjoying like working towards a stage every year, um, and I don't want you know I don't want to be sort of think, oh, that's bodybuilding over because. What's the point of having probably the biggest achievement of your life if it actually means that you can no longer do what you love? Yeah. yeah. It's a bit weird. Yeah? You just all, all of a sudden you go from the very top of your game instantly 
by a changing something to the bottom. Yeah. Like you just go to the bottom of the next pile. Uh, mm. But again, we'll, we'll see what the improvements are next year. If I can put another ten pound on, then then I might be able to sort of match up with a few of the guys. I don't know. I, I people, think a lot of people seem to think as well, don't they? Like, if you don't have an IFBB Pro card, you're not gonna be a successful competitor or anything like that. A lot of the PCA pros, like Peter Molnar, Randy, you know, they're yeah. very, very impressive, successful, and financially well off bodybuilders. I don't know how it is now because I'm yeah. pretty aware there were some changes in the way the PCA shows work in terms of prize money. Um, well, on, I the, think on the obviously, pro the PCA pros, they, they get the opportunity to go and travel. And yeah. win a good amount. And win a good amount of money. Um, yeah. Like most, most pro show wins in the IFBB is like a three thousand dollar. Like they don't even pay for you flights and yeah. Your yeah. Like unless you're winning at Arnold. I mean, I think I think James got nine thousand dollars the other day, which is that's 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 a nice little chunk yeah. of cash. But that like, most of them, they all seem to be like three thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. The the price 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 price. I don't think you win the show for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so true. Yeah. It's um what, how, how oh, much sorry. sorry, yeah. How much is the um the prize money if you win the open at the PCA the worlds. Uh, yeah, worlds. It's I'm, I, I went I one year and I can't remember how much it was. I can't I can't remember. I know a few years ago when they did the body power show. Yeah. I think Sean Tavernier won. I think he won ten thousand for his for his win, and then and then he won the overall for another. Like I think it was twenty. Yeah. Well, I know Pete Mon now going all about. He, he was. I mean, yeah, I believe he tried to. Did he compete the other day for an IFBB Pro Card, or he's due to very soon? I think so. Uh, yeah. But, is, he, is he doing the the Romania show? Maybe, but but he he's made a very successful living by. Yep. Yeah, winning shows. Go, he does all the international in. events as well, doesn't he? Like goes over to Korea and, and China. Yeah, and, there's a lot of prize money. Um, yeah. There's a lot of prize money on offer over there with their, with their PCA shows. Um, and I think even even now that FitX, they're putting prizes yeah. out for people like a year, a, a full year sponsorship and a proper sponsorship would come like that's going to help competitors out a lot. Yeah, like, that's a that's a good prize for an amateur to win. Yeah, like, most of their supplements looked after for a full year. Yeah, that, that, that alleviates a lot of pressure. Um, so it just is what it is. That like, I just enjoy competing. That's it. At the end of the day, that's what you're here. Well, for. I enjoy. I enjoy the process of yeah. competing more. Like show A is all right. Take it, leave it. It's nice when you win. Like. Um, well, that's it, right? Like, it, I don't think. It, I think if you're competing to win a pro card not competing because you love bodybuilding there's something fundamentally wrong about the the way you're going about bodybuilding yeah i think yeah definitely like it will if if you're good enough it'll come like, yeah. you'll sort of just gravitate to it and uh, and you'll get it um but there's, there's a lot of people that i think um tyler smith he posted on facebook about he's seeing like people that have done one or two shows almost having a tantrum because they're not winning their pro card well, like it's supposed to come that easy. Like I, if I, if I end up, let's say, in some amazing, wonderful world, I end up getting a pro card. I don't see myself getting it even then for at least like five seasons. I don't see it, you know. So even now, like with the opportunities, yeah, like, the more opportunities there are, the, the more people that are going to go with those shows. So it's still, it, it's still very, very difficult to win it. Yeah. Um, day. and it does take a long time but yeah. these people believe like, oh, they feel almost like they, they expect to go and win it when they've not even done a real show Yeah, like they've not placed anywhere at any British finals of any federation Yeah. oh I'm going to go win my pro card like, unless you're some crazy uncovered talent like yeah. a Philly just appearing out of nowhere it's not going to happen Yeah. Like you're going to have seasoned bodybuilders um, yeah. that are far superior yeah. that have been plugging away and winning British titles. I mean, how, how many people actually won a two-bro show 
and still not won their pro card. I'm sure people like there's guys with like three, four, five class wins, yep. and they're still not getting their pro card, and they're still having to plug away, and they're right on the brink. Yeah, hey, Ada's one of those guys in men's physique. The guy so, fucking wins his class at every single show, and yeah. he just can't win the overall for, for whatever reason. He always gets and shafted. He's extremely yeah. impressive physique. Yeah, very, very good. So, I mean, he's just like a handful. Like, there's loads that have got, they've got so many class wins. Yeah. Like, like Mark Joyce, Mark Joyce, a quality bodybuilder. He's yeah. got loads of class wins or loads of seconds or just like, and it's just, it's, yeah. it's so close. Mm. But you never know who's turning up at your show. That's it. Like, That's it. And it's, do you want to, do you want to really keep traveling the world trying to, like, either, get lucky at a poor standard show or finally you you get it, you get your win that Mm. you sort of deserve. This is something that um, AJ said to me last year um, because I was like, I I remember at one point I think I was freaking out about who might be turning up at my first show, uh, like first time competing there. So I was like, oh, but what if Jack Richardson's there? Who's now like, you know, going for his pro card in whatever division he's doing. Um, but like, I, I, he just said to me, it was like, good, you should want them there. Why would you want to not win against the best people you can win against? Like, it, it's like the mentality of winning against losers doesn't make sense, right? So, yeah. I mean, they always say if you want to be the best, you got to take out the best. Yeah, exactly. like, there's, there's no point having a little asterisk next to a win. Like, oh, no one turned up, it was a dog shit show, but I won. <laughs> yeah, like, I, mean, I, I won my show, I was in a class of one. Yeah, <laughs> you get that sometimes <laughs> at these shows. <laughs> uh, I, I feel sorry for. I feel sorry for quality physiques that turn up and there's no one to compete. Like yeah. they would have, they would have won if there was ten people on the stage. But then there's the question mark, isn't there? Well, like it is. Yeah. It, 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 I mean, it might be worse when someone shit gets a first place. That hard. <laughs> fucks me off. <laughs> but, but yeah, I do feel for guys that have grafted mm. to stand on the stage and not actually get to compare with anyone and yeah. feel like it's an actual win. Yeah. So you know what? That's that's why I ended up doing, like, my, for my first show last year, I could have done teens. Yeah. I could have still done teens. And I would have won teens. <laughs> I know that for a fact. But I chose to do juniors, and I needed to do juniors because I wanted to compete against actually a good standard of, like, competition and actually yeah. see where I stacked up, especially at, at my first show, so... Yeah, I hundred percent understand that I- idea of yeah. You, you when you're ready, that's when you deserve to win. Well, everyone like people always say, "Oh, you tried so hard, you deserve it." Like everybody's everybody's, everybody's training hard, hard. and yeah. everybody, everybody's dieting hard. Like everyone's doing the same thing. So, like it's all like your mate telling you, "Oh, but you deserved it because you tried." Like, well, so did that person. So did that person. So did that person. Yeah. Like, and it don't come down to who deserves it anyway. It comes down to yeah best on stage yeah if you're someone as well i think there's some competitors who think they deserve to win that annoys me as well yeah there's a lot of self-titled people but, yeah um they, they get found out that's it yeah that's it so obviously like you so you talked us through a bit about like this show and like everything else were, were you obviously like you were competing on the same weekend as the Europa. So how much of like a track did you keep of everything going on there? Did you have any clients who were there or anything like that? The Europa? Yeah. No, no. Um, obviously I, I tried to, I tried to keep it with as best I can. I, try, I actually tried to get the stream and yeah. I clicked on the website and it was all in Spanish. And I, I was like, well, I don't, and then there was a PayPal thing. I, was like, I don't know what I'm fucking pressing. So, <laughs> So I didn't do, you know what, do you know what I found out yesterday as well about that? If you was, if you switch the option to British, you don't have to pay for it. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Well, I, I couldn't find an option to, sw- to switch. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 was, I was looking on the page and I was like, I don't know what I'm pressing. So <laughs> and I, I didn't end up buying it because um, I, I would have. But I think, I think by the time I got off stage from the overall, they must have been on about a similar time. 
Um, because I checked my phone and James had won. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. it'd probably be a waste of money anyway. <laughs> yeah. well, I, was, I was just in the hotel from I came off stage midday ish and I went back to the hotel and I just chilled out in the hotel until seven o'clock till I went back across for the overall, um, like seven half seven. So we was just sort of chilling on nice. the phone and then watching um keeping up with what was going on in Spain and yeah. bits and bobs. Aye. What, you know what, what did you think about James winning the show? What did you think about yeah, his improvements and everything like that? Yeah, I was over the moon for him. Um, and I thought, obviously, I'd, I'd made predictions that I think he could get a second. That was when I thought Rami, I thought if Rami turns up, it's, it's Rami. Like, yeah. He's just that big and he could people say he's fat, like he comes in condition. I don't care what people say. Like sometimes he's smooth, but he's not smooth. It's the condition to win, isn't it? He, he yeah, always has but, enough to win. Well, I believe his shape and like his, his size would, would always would have won. Yeah, regardless. But, yeah, COVID and 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 James by the well, looking at the scorecard, James walked it. Yeah. Like he brought unbelievable condition. Yeah. Um his size was just too much for yeah for the, and Lucas's shape. What, have you seen so you've seen the scorecards? You might give us giving us some insight. I haven't actually seen the scorecards for it. Uh well I know James was just straight first. Okay, um, okay. And, and, and then, he, James got James got one like, Yeah, yeah. He got just yeah, I bet like just all the way through he was just ticking boxes. Yeah, James, James got three points, pre-judging three points, evening show. He was straight straight first. And then by, I can't remember what second place got, but it was a lot higher than, it was almost like I think second, it was sevens. I think it was sevens. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was higher than that. It was like yeah, 12, yeah. I think. Really? I think it was like 12, 13. So really? Obviously, wow. The judges couldn't make their mind up between second, third, and fourth. Yeah, it seems it seems like uh, in the end they just went for the look that was remotely closest to James. <laughs> That's what it seemed like when they chose Lucas. They just chose the next guy who's got a dark tan and really good condition. <laughs> well, I just say, I mean, James, he, was, he just looked phenomenal. Oh, absolutely, um, yeah. And uh, I mean, obviously, I said earlier, do people deserve it? Like, there's one man that you could never say doesn't deserve. Yeah, that win, like. It's unbelievable day in, day out. He's one of those true hardcore bodybuilders that's just genuine. It's not it's not fake bullshit like pretending to be hardcore or anything like that. He he just lives and breathes this sport. Yeah. Um yeah. and he's made some massive improvements and you, and you don't the thing is though, like a lot of people don't realise that this is something he's been working towards since last year at Europa. Like pretty much, he's been working yeah. solidly just for a straight year to get this win. This is someone he's been working towards for the last fourteen years. Yeah, uh, yeah. This, is, this is a culmination of that uh, year after yeah. year after year, just like being extreme so consistency. consistency. He, yeah, he's been a professional since he was eighteen years old. Mm. Like the way he conducts himself and and the way he does everything. Um, but yeah, he, he he looked phenomenal, and I just hope. That obviously travel restrictions don't stop him going. Yeah. Well, I, I I'm thinking if 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 uh, Haddy can get his visa, which he has done now, surely James can get over. Surely. Yeah. We, no, we're not allowed to. UK is not allowed to fly into America. There's, is there? There's exceptions, though, isn't there? Yeah, bodybuilding is not one of them. Hmm. Go, go to there was the whole thing sport. like. Yeah, because there's a whole thing is like if you're an athlete, that's one of the exceptions. If you're a researcher, that's an exception. But no, they didn't let Samson go. That's true. That's true. Right the airport and James Carr. I spoke because I I I'd messaged James a few weeks ago because I'm on I'm, the flights are so cheap and I want to go. Yeah. And I spoke to James and I said, if you if you if you get it, I'm coming. Yeah. Um, and then when I messaged him on Sunday night and I said, let's hope they like release the travel restrictions so I can come and he messaged back saying they need to lift him so I can go. <laughs> so yeah, 
they they do need to they do need to lift them. I mean, even now, yeah. right? Re- Regan, everyone's yeah. telling Regan to, to go to the Chicago Pro. He can't go because he's been in Europe. Can't do it. Yeah, that's it. He, he, he can't fly directly into America. So so it's still those those restrictions are still there, mm. and there's no way around them. Yeah. Wow, it's going to be it's, a, it's going to be a packed Olympia. That's for sure. Fingers uh, crossed if everybody can be there. People can get there. Yeah. yeah. But even well, then, you've got who, who have you got who's there currently? You've got you've got uh, Brandon, you've got Phil for definite. You've got uh, yeah. Is Phil definite? Yeah, cuz they're making a documentary about him competing. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Are you not convinced? Are you not convinced that he will? No. What makes you think that? What makes you think he won't? I just don't. You don't see it? No, I'm not saying that he won't. Yeah. But I don't think it's set in stone that he will. Okay, okay. I don't think... He ain't signed a contract. Like, it's... We'll see. I mean, I hope he does. see. Yeah. I hope he does. And if he does, I hope I'm there to see it. Yeah, yeah. Because I do I do want to see him on stage properly. That is one thing I was thinking about as well. I was like... I'm I'm so tempted to make try and get over there like for um for the Christmas time. And just... well, that, that was the plan, weren't it? Back in January. When yeah, we the plan. Matt on, yeah, like Rod was going to compete. You were going to compete, Matt, at the amateur. Yeah, I was going to come watch Ryan the amateur going. and the open and uh, get and watch some Mr. Olympia. But hey ho, this year did Load not work out the way we planned. I <laughs> know. Uh, like I say, it's, it's about five hundred quid. It's about five hundred quid for five nights. That's n- Lights, everything like, and that's in the hotel that the Olympia's at. Like, yeah, that's insane. That is insane. But it's, it's just whether, getting there. It's just getting there. It's whether they allow it, and at this rate, I uh, it doesn't look likely. I could try and pull a friends and family card, but even then, I think I'd struggle. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd struggle to get over. Yeah, no, it's... Well, um... the, do- the dog ate my passport, sort of thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I might need to renew my passport, actually. I haven't checked it in a while. Last, I haven't been abroad in... I don't know. Last time I, I went... I, I haven't been anywhere since uh, 2016. Well, I haven't been... I haven't been... Well, last time I was abroad, I was actually... That was when I was in America, when I was living there. Living out there, so yeah. I haven't been over. Well, well, no, no, that's that's not true. I went, I went away last year, but prior to that, it was 2016. Actually, I'm pretty sure all my credentials and everything are in check still, so I don't need to sign anything to fly over. I've still got everything, so we'll see. You can fly over, but they'll probably just turn you away. So. Yeah, they'll see my last name and <laughs> Arabic last name. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Sending you back. <laughs> yeah, no. No, we've. Uh, Bring it back. Um, I know we touched on it a little bit. Uh, we had a question like, has the win affected your outlook on the, on the sport at all? Yeah. No. In, Fair in, enough. That's what I mean. We've already really covered it. Yeah. So. In, in, in what way? Uh, they didn't say, but like, I don't know, like maybe you're... See, this is... Oh, have we lost him? Do you know, while he's we, coming, I'll ask a question. I don't know. <laughs> he's falling asleep. But it's more than the average. You don't really have any grievances towards anyone. Or Joe, like Joe, 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 so Joe. Slow down, slow down, slow down. I can see, anyway. Um, Joe, Joe. So yeah, I don't know if you just went, maybe, maybe you're, you know. It's highly unprofessional. This is highly unprofessional, Joe. It's frozen on your tired face and we we have no clue what you're about okay i'll just i'll ask you a question then so i did see as well which i thought was quite funny was jay cutler what's the problem and that whole thing (laughs) what do you mean what's the problem you're about three minutes behind us hello hello Hello, joe (laughs) joe oh my god God. the eyes (laughs) actually all right (laughs) what's wrong with him (laughs) oh <laughs> uh, <laughs> the uh the internet did joe dirty there the the internet really fucks you over joe <laughs> i'm sorry mate joe's internet is not coping well this evening um let's 
Matt, I'll ask you a question while Joe figures out what's going on with his internet. Um, so, like, obviously, I saw a message. It's not internet, mate. It's yours. I'm back. Um... What do you mean? My, me and Matt like, are oh, fine. Just... Me and Matt are okay. Yeah, think... yeah, but me and Jack were fine in the last one. So No, 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 no. Me and Jack were fine. You were not okay in the last podcast. And I do apologise. You disconnected twice um, in the last podcast. But no, I just realised that uh, I was talking to myself for about five minutes. I know. So <laughs> you were just what, waffling on. What was what was the last word at my mouth? I don't know. It was something about I don't know. I don't even know if you were asking a question. I think you were just spitballing. Talking about the outlet as my outlook changed. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Um, Please don't repeat. I think they're asking the whole like, conversation. As, as you, has your has your drive increased at all or anything like that? It's like this is from their point of view. I don't. I know like you're fucking hella driven anyway. Yeah. yeah. No, it's so not, it's, not, it's not really done a lot to the yeah, mindset. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, although I'm a bit worried that Lee might get a pro card before me at PCA, so I'll probably have to get him to. Actually, shall we take a... Let's give a little shout-out to um, the other... Wait, it, it, incredible. Yeah, like, crazy. Crazy. Like, shit, when when, me and, when Matt was doing his pump-up and I was at the gym, um, like, she looks massive and feminine in that in that photo. Like, yeah. she, she didn't look big with the... Uh, just with fresh with the tan on or anything. It just shows the proportions and it's, it's incredible. Yeah, because that's crazy. That is a crazy physique, especially as a first timer. That is freakishly good. Yeah, freakishly good. Matt, she, do you think honestly? Probably won the Sunday show as well because she, the girl who won the overall on Sunday, yeah. Lee beat her. Lee beat her on Sunday on Saturday. So, wow, wow. Um, I'd agree. She, she possibly I, uh, she, had it done the Sunday show, she would probably have won that as well. She looks. This looks like she could be a pro. To me, don't don't say that because she'll watch this and. <laughs> hear you now. Like, I, I was very impressed before she even won, but like this looks like it could, you know, do some damage. I have to, I have to tell her she's shit to keep her self esteem down. <laughs> like she might, she might leave me. <laughs> In all yeah, seriousness, yeah. though, do we think that? Uh, that Mrs. Tofton's win overshadowed Matt this weekend. Well, of course it did, and I'm happy. And I'm happy for it to do so. <laughs> Are you sure, Matt? Are you sure you're happy? Positive. Positive. <laughs> for, for a week. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> normal. Uh, I'm getting moaned at by the dog. What? <laughs> uh, have, we, licking, have we had the licking dog Licking tan off your leg. Yeah, have we had the dog on the podcast before? Can we say hello to you? No, dog? we haven't. You're not seeing it. No. I reckon you got a small dog. <laughs> I just I got a beagle. Oh yeah. <laughs> then I we will be able to. Uh, Hello. There he is. Hey, Matt. Oh. Hello. He Special guest. Who's that? Is he about to win an over? There he is. Well? <laughs> uh, there's your Uh oh. Oh, uh, he could. Oh, I, think, I think. I think you. He could turn pro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now, all the, now the other ones. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but, so, um, what do you have any weight goals in mind? Obviously, like weights, just neither here nor there, really, is it? But do, do you have a goal in mind other than just getting fucking huge? You're right. You're just you're saying this to the guy who's just won the overall at 217 pounds. I know. I know. But like, it's it's the whole illusion part of it, right? Because uh, it's yeah, just, yeah. you look a lot no, better. Like, goals, I don't, I don't care. Why. I just, as long as I'm growing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Are there I, any, any like areas to... that you'd like to bring up more so than others? Mm. Uh, no, just everywhere. Just everywhere. Grow, grow, grow. It'd be nice to maybe have a decent set of calves. <laughs> but, <laughs> You're telling me. You're telling me. Well, but, I, I'm, but I'm not holding my breath. Yeah. But, no, I think I'd still like bring my quads and stuff up, but I, I've always been like quite well balanced. So I do believe that everything's sort of 
has to, to keep my physique looking like like my physique. I have to bring everything up at once. Yeah, it has to it has to grow equally. Yeah, I, I can't focus on just one area, otherwise mm. it'll throw off what. Mm. Um, that's that's the bl- the best place to be, though, isn't it? Is to be equal everywhere, be good, have good symmetry, and just need to grow everywhere. Like that's a similar situation to me. Not to blow my own trumpet, but I just need to grow everywhere. I don't really have yeah. one spot which is horrifically bad on me, <laughs> other than the my calves. The calves. Yeah, I mean, b- bodybuilding is about proportions and yeah. like said, symmetry. So if if you've got that sort of down, yeah. then then obviously you can just continue training, hopefully, in the manner that you are. Yeah. You don't have to give anything any special attention. Yeah. Um, and just hopefully everything continues to come up right. like together. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Um, and so Mrs. Tofton, it, 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 does she have any plans in regards to competing? Are you going to stay, like, are you going to go to the same shows from now on? And win all the overalls at those shows as well, or what's what's the plan? British finals next year. Okay, cool. Yeah, very exciting. Yeah, uh, who have you got any um, clients that you'll be competing with next year? I always find it interesting when coaches compete alongside clients because I'm just sort of figuring that how are you managing that with sort of workload when you're competing? Oh, I, I'm I'm fine when I'm prepping. Like it doesn't. Yeah. Nothing stops me from working, or like I spent all weekday in the in the hotel room Saturday Sunday doing check ins and working through things. I had I had a client compete on set on on the Sunday with me in in the classic class, so he was he was on first, um, and we managed everything fine. Awesome. Like, it, it's kind of nice sometimes. I like I didn't use to manage show days very well, mm. but. This weekend, I think with Lee being there and me trying to stop her from panicking about little things mm. almost helped me not panic. Yeah, because you're focused. So, on sometimes when you've got a, a distraction of a, like you got to look after clients as well, um, mm. show they don't get on top of you too much. Because that, that's the one thing I did this year really well. Like, I didn't get stressed. Yeah. Um, and I, for the probably the first time ever, I managed mm. show day very well in terms of I not worrying things that I can't control. Don't worry about. Um, but to be fair, the, although it was COVID, like the show was the show was run so well that I sort of wanted it to be COVID all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It almost made the show so much more efficient. Yeah, because they let only so many people backstage, and everyone had a time slot when you got to be there. So it wasn't as like it wasn't, over, it wasn't overcrowded. Didn't feel yeah. like a sauna, and everything moved like if you could have that, but yet have an audience. Yeah. Like it was oh. fucking ants. It was that's how I that's how I like to imagine like the Arnold or something being like because it's so specifically tight. It's not. Field, but it, 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 it'd be even more hectic than yeah. like, you know that many competitors that yeah. I, like I say I think the the way the PCA it, it was a little bit weird. It wasn't weird competing um, and not seeing a crowd, but it was a bit weird watching. Yeah. And being so far away from other people watching, and and the hall being very very empty, right? Um, like, it, obviously, it's always nice if you've got an atmosphere and a lot of people shouting and cheering, but that doesn't necessarily bother me, or that's not affecting the outcome of the show, whether right. someone's cheering for you or not. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it was it was so well run, like it really was. Um. Absolutely, like no complaint. And I normally got something to complain about. So, <laughs> so it was amazing. I haven't. Um, yeah, I, I thought the PCA did a fantastic job of it. Awesome. Shout out to the PCA. Good. Well, you've certainly changed your tune from the last uh, British finals that you talked about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What did I say then? It was like, I, can't I can't remember it. It's like there was one mirror or something, and then you was on at like midnight or some shit like that. No, no, that was that was the year before the world. That was a shit show. Oh, right. 
Right. Uh, yeah. I remember that world. So I went and watched yeah. it. I left early because there's no way I was fucking waiting around. Yeah, that, that was absolute dog shit. And <laughs> like, yeah, that, that, that was, yeah. But the the British final last year was pretty good at the bonus arena. But um, yeah, this show was really well run, especially considering the circumstances. Mm. Yeah. I think yeah. one of the takeaways as well, like your tan was very fucking good. Yes. To be fair, since I've started doing the, because I, I don't get my, everyone goes and gets a base tan done the night before, uh, and I don't. Um, I get all my tan done on the, on the day of the show, in the morning of the show, and they use the super dark pro tan on me, so they'll put like a, they'll put a quick coat on, then I'll wait 10, 15 minutes left to dry, and they put like a super dark coat on, yeah. um, and it just takes to my skin so well. And, and the color, the color always looked good to me. And I've had that, I've had that in the past three shows that I've done. Yeah. Uh, and it, it really is like that, that pro tan super dark color just suits me really well. And it's always come out good. Okay. Um, but yeah, I just hate the idea of waking up in a hotel room in the morning of the show, uh, covered in tan, where you can literally see no detail whatsoever. Um, and you don't know what you look like. So that, that 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 would just fuck my head up so much that I just don't want any town yeah. until the morning of the show. Interesting. So f- for us pale guys, what is your tanning protocol, Matt? Uh, about six weeks out, I'll use some Milana tan. Aye. Of and then I'll start the sunbeds about four weeks out and I'll just sunbed every day. Mm. Wow. And then... Um, in your last week, do you stop doing the sunbed? Uh, I didn't go on the... I think I did my last sunbed on the Wednesday before the show. Might have been the Monday or the Tuesday, actually. Uh, um, ju- just in... If you burn, you'll hold a bit of water. Yeah. Um, but so, I was at that. I was at that. There was no chance of me ever burning. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Even Joseph asked me, he asked me on Saturday where I'd be tanned on, and I didn't even have any tan on. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I thought he'd had a base tan done or something like that. But no, it was just like, no. This no. is the MT2 for you, mate. That's it, that's it. So then when you... It's have- like Lee, Lee, said to, Lee said to me, like, are we really dark or are you abnormally pale? And I'm like, yeah, it's been a, it's been a rough year. I am aware, you know... Um, no, it's um, so. like in terms of your actual tanning coats that you have done, do you just do like the base and the t- like two base layers on the top up, or like what? what is how just you told you what I did. No, you told me, don't listen, Jermaine. You told me that you've had the tanning beds and you have Milan. Tan- what else? No, like, no, no, before, yeah, we, we, before we already discussed the pro tan. Oh, the yeah. morning of the show, yeah, I get the super dark pro tan. Sorry, sorry, I switched off for a second there. Carry on, <laughs> as you were. Yeah. So morning of the show, I go. They put a quick, they put a quick like undercoat on. I wait yeah. ten minutes for it to dry. Then they put the super dark over the top. Job done. I'm gonna write this down so they don't forget. All right. Uh... Yeah, you're not a fucking ghost, Jermaine. <laughs> what? I think you're not a ghost. Me and Matt. Are I am damn for pale. someone who's got a mum who's black. Yes, I am a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, I'm very pale. I'm very pale for a mixed race guy. Um, oh. What? So, um, have we got any questions, Joe? Have we got any actual? I got questions? one, and that was it. Was in regards to uh, your top three gyms you've trained at. Oh. Uh, top three gyms. Can I say mine? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Shameless. Obviously, my, obviously mine's my favourite. Um. <laughs> Max Muscle. And it's a shame that's gone. Uh, it still lives on in Ultra Flex Durham in the corner. Mm. And <laughs> third. Uh, probably Strength Asylum. Okay. Okay. I, w- I do want to go visit. Um, I've been saying for way too long to Jack yeah. Richardson that I'm going to head down there, and I haven't yet. So when he's back off his holidays, I'll probably head down. 
and uh, check actually also also um, muscle unit is it Rob's gym yeah yeah that, yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that's, that's very good cool, money. Yeah, that's very much my type of gym. Like, really good atmosphere. It feels, it feels like you've got low ceilings enclosed. Yeah, hardcore, um, hardcore gym. It's just got, it's just got that feel of when you go in there. Like, I like gyms where even if it's really, really busy, you feel like you're the only one in there. Yeah. Like, when you're training, you don't notice anybody else. Like, the atmosphere is just right. And you just crack on like yeah. the too many gyms you go and they're like the environment's just too busy. Like even if there's no one in there, there's just like yeah. so much going on that yeah. you, you're just distracted from your workout. Gotcha. Um, you so want it I, simple. But then you want it all to be simple, like clear as day, it's all there. I mean, I, I just like a gym where like it's not too big and open. Um it's just got to have it's just got to have a right the right atmosphere. Uh, atmosphere is everything when it comes to a gym, and I don't think it's something that you can fake or or create as such. Just some gyms have it, and some gyms don't. Yeah, and and, and everybody's opinion of atmosphere is probably different as well. Yeah. Um, so that's why people like certain gyms, and other people don't like those gyms, and and vice versa. Right. So. But I've said to I've said to Tim Tim Stewart before, I don't think I'd enjoy Ultra Flex Rotherham. It's okay. too tall for me. See, I if you I, get I me have a mixed opinion. Yeah, I, don't so, I don't like high ceiling gyms. I don't like big open space gyms. See, I one of the like first I would consider hardcore gyms I ever went to, really was um, Powerhouse in Long Island which is like very kind of open plan. It's not like a multi-story gym, but the way it's spread out, it's like a long hallway, and like long corridor, like big open hall spaces. So for me, I feel like quite comfortable in, in Ultraflex Rotherham because like I, it's, it's a very similar style of gym, just obviously not quite as, it's not got that like old school grit like a gym like Powerhouse has. Uh, Ultraflex Rotherham, but I do, I do like it just for. I think a lot of it is down to the people I know there. That's the thing because I've got a lot of friends who train at Rotherham as well, and it yeah. is close to home for me. So, but yeah, no. Did you ever I, get a I chance to you, train at the original Temple, Matt? No. Mm. People, I've heard so many good things about that gym. People of all, like everyone who who I know who's bit used to go to that gym has said it's one of the best gyms they've ever been to. So, if you enjoy doing a set of lap pull downs and then stepping in a bit of piss on the floor, yeah, it's the place to be. Exactly, so. that's exactly what you want. You want to sit down yeah. on the bench in the changing rooms and almost pin yourself because someone's left something out. That's what you want. Mm. It's to be a proper gritty, yeah, man. gritty gym. Like I do. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I just look at my gym. Yeah. I ju- I will like as soon as all this bullshit's over. Yeah, um, we'll come I, I I fully think me and Joe will like be heading your way and coming over to you oh. um, and checking out because it's been a live crazy. podcast, huh? <laughs> For a live podcast, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we could do that. To be fair, we could do that. I could bring my nice fancy uh, road mic, micro, yeah, yeah, and we can uh, hook that up and we can all do an indoor gym podcast. That'd be cool. Gather around the gather gather around the, uh, the the fucking campfire. Yeah, no, that's what uh, Joshua Clough wants us doing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Wants to go into yeah. a field somewhere and film a podcast. Uh, do you know, do you know uh, Josh Kinsey Clough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that's he's very free spirited gentleman. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he was like, "Yeah, man, fuck it, just come down. We'll sit on the beach. We'll start a bonfire and we'll just smoke a joint." And just look out to the sea and do a podcast. It's like, all right, man. Oh, and just you've got Wi-Fi. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he's a, uh, he's a I do like Josh a lot, though. Funny guy. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with a lot of the stuff he says. So, uh, all right. The, uh, just before we wrap up, man, do you yeah. want to give a shout, buddy, Matt? What's that? 
Do you want to give a shout out to anyone or anything, or plug yourself and like? Do you want to uh, shout anybody out or plug anything? Yep. Nah, I've got I've got nothing to plug. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Um, congrats to you, mate, and congrats to Lee as well. And like everything, like you guys have smashed it out the park this past weekend. Um, and I look forward to having you on again soon. When uh, when is the next next big event in Matt's life that we can talk? I to? have no idea what's going on. When the Christmas sandwiches come out, that's the one. Then yeah, we'll do that. That's, we'll do that. That's the next big event. Yeah, I'm waiting for the uh, I'm waiting for the Christmas sandwiches. Yeah, I can't wait for. I, I'm really excited for this year to be over. To be completely honest with you, uh, like I'm right. really... it's just going to continue next year. 2021 would be as shit. I know, but all the bad stuff started this year. At least, hopefully, it'll end next year. That's my way of thinking. Probably won't happen, but hey ho. Um, all right, Joe. Joe's freaking out again, uh, so just... we'll we'll leave him to it. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you guys for listening to this episode of Off the Script Podcast with uh, the champ uh, Matt and um, oh, Joe's kind of back now. I don't know if he wants to say goodbye. I'll say goodbye for Joe. Goodbye from Joseph. Thank you guys for listening. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.